Well, hello everybody. Uh, it has been a fantastic few days, uh, at least as far as temperatures are concerned and things like that, right? And it's hard to imagine. I'm excited uh, to have dragonflies come out to hopefully knock down some of those mosquitoes. We were talking about that uh, here at church today. That'll be a nice sign as those mosquitoes have been out everywhere. Really, it's funny to even think about. Not long ago, I was complaining to you all about how much snow there was on the ground, and now I'm complaining because it's there's too many mosquitoes. So par for the course for us human beings who are prone to complain, right? Yeah. So we're going to touch base just a little bit again. Uh, if you were here Sunday or watching online, you, you heard us talk out of Luke 19, this uh, exchange between Zacchaeus, that wee little man, but a lot more to that story, right? And then of course, Jesus. And we landed on a few things. Uh, but one of the things that we didn't really talk about a whole lot was Jesus uh, looking up, so to speak, at that tree and calling down Zacchaeus. Come down. I'm, I'm going to your house today. I'm going to spend some time with you. And, and eventually what happens is Zacchaeus uh, is, is saved. Today, salvation has come to this house. Uh, we find out Jesus sa says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And so I want to just touch base about that calling that Jesus specifically shows on Zacchaeus' life because it's a really blatant example of Jesus doing what he needed to or wanted to, uh, to to have Zacchaeus draw near to him. It took a response from Zacchaeus to, to get down, etc. But really what I'm talking about is what theologians uh, would call this doctrine of election. A little bit of a of a heavy topic to talk about on a fairly short Devo, but I just want to share a few things that Scripture teaches us about this important idea that God saves whom he wants to. You heard one of the things uh, that I mentioned this last week. He will have mercy on whom he will have mercy, compassion on whom he will have compassion. God's choice, predestination to an extent, this doctrine of election that God has uh, chosen those him, whom he will save. And, and again, I recognize as you hear that, it, it might be disheartening to you. There are many who, who, who think that it's a, 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 a fight between election and free will. There's more to it, I think, than that. So let's just talk about a few passages that just talk about this idea of election or of God calling. And so we're going to start in uh, Ephesians chapter 1, which of course is written by Paul, and he opens his letter to there fairly early to the church in Ephesus with these words out of first, or the first chapter, verses 4 and 5, talking about Jesus. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. God chose us. We would not have come to faith in him without his work inside of us, his work through the Holy Spirit. He called us, those who would believe, to him. Another uh, passage I want to share with you is from Romans chapter 9, and really Romans 8, 9, uh, 11 definitely talks about it some is all about this idea of God's sovereignty and the choice that he make and and can make as the creator of the world the saver of our souls etc uh, Paul quotes that line I already said about having mercy and compassion etc but in chapter 9 verse 16 here's what it says uh, right after he quotes that I will have mercy on whom I'll have mercy etc he says, it does not therefore depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. Our election depends on God's mercy, not on anything that we do have done uh, or can do, etc. It's not something that we want strong enough and somehow God decides to save us. God decides to save us. He gives us the faith uh, for us to believe and then we can believe. A few passages then out of the book of John. So let's quote, uh, let's ponder a little bit what Jesus himself says. Two, two verses I want to share with you out of John. The first is John chapter 6, verse 44. Uh, he says, Jesus says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them on the last day. Zacchaeus is a prime example of that, of, of Jesus, of God the Father drawing Zacchaeus 
to Jesus, of Jesus saying, come down, I'm, I'm going to your house today. And then on to John chapter 15, where it says, uh, Jesus again, this is that famous passage about the, about the vine and the bread, branches, chapter 15. This is verse 16, where Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Jesus chooses the believer. He chooses us and to be sons and daughters. And, and here's where it kind of gets interesting, because it can seem a little bit exclusive and in or out, but there's many passages also that talk about even though God saves whom he will save, it also talks often about it's available to all people. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Whoever believes will be saved. In fact, I would say they'll be among the elect. And then 2 Peter uh, says this in 2 Peter 3, 9, a, a famous verse perhaps for you as well. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. And then he says, instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So God wants all people to come to him. We said the other day, I quoted out of Paul's uh, letter to Titus, that he the, the, the glory of, of God has appeared offering salvation to all people. The grace of God, excuse me, has appeared that offers salvation to all people. So, so how does this work? Does it, is it kind of a, a both and or what? It, did God choose or, or is it available to all? Did God choose some or is it available to all would be the question. And even more so, uh, how do I know if I'm one of the elect? That's kind of the scariest or, or hardest question that we want to have. How do I know if I'm one of God's elect? If I'm among the people that he will show mercy, among the people that he will show compassion, among those who can be saved? Here's how you can know. Believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, the Bible tells us. And we're called into that. He, he works in that. We can't have faith unless the Father calls us. The good news is he calls all, or it's available to all. Again, a tough doctrine. No doubt, I'm not sure if I, if I really brought it any closer to home for you. It's one that theologians have talked about for generations. Uh, a tough one for us in our, in our finite understandings to truly grasp, but one that we can trust God to work in. Again, I don't think it's anything we need to worry about because God is full of grace and mercy and he will save those whom he has called. And if you want to know if you've been called, if you're one of the elect, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And you are part of that family. All right, have a great week. Enjoy this great weather while it lasts.